So we're under eight weeks away till uh, March the 4th when I'm going to absolutely annihilate the Belen that they call Tony Bellew. And I'm feeling good, I'm feeling healthy. You know, South Beach, Miami, Florida is really uh, hitting the spot. I'm happy, I'm healthy, waking up early, going to bed uh, early also, eating clean, you know, feeling, feeling good. I've incorporated a lot of fun and happiness into this uh, beginning part of my training camp. Now it's getting to the uh, eight, seven week point. We're gonna start turning up the, turning up the heat and training. And um, I'm, I'm physically in a great place. I, I feel great and um, I'm just hoping everybody out there can really and truly enjoy while this guy's conscious because he's gonna become unconscious very very quickly from the first bell do not blink because I'm looking at I'm punching super hard and super fast accurate and um oh the bell ends getting destroyed see you in a bit what up fight world it's your boy ego and I'm back with some more boxing back with my original segment eel Ego Weight Watchers, where I give you guys a look into the fighter's lifestyle before and after progress pictures, especially if they have a fight coming up. Now, make sure you guys smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel. March 4th cannot get here soon enough, right? And we got two fights that are being talked about. Obviously, Garcia versus Thurman, and over in the UK side of things, you have David Hay versus Tony Bellew at heavyweight. This is interesting to me. And if it weren't for Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, I would probably maybe even try to get to the UK for this fight. No, it's not the most meaningful heavyweight fight. I'm actually upset that Cannon Briggs did not get his opportunity after David Hay promised that he would fight him next if he fought on his undercard and won and passed a brain scan. But I think Bellew and Hay are doing a good job of jogging up interest in the fight. And it's 2017, people. So sometimes that's what's needed. Over in the UK, it's a pay-per-view event. And they're building excitement. So that's at least something to look forward to. Again, it's not the most meaningful heavyweight fight. But they're making it interesting. They're adding that WWE element to it. And there's another London fight or UK fight that did that in recent memory and it turned out to be a fight of the year type of contender and that was Dillian White versus Derek Chisora. I really have fun with that particular fight. Constant energy and attitude from both from the gloves are off to the press conferences. You got Chisora throwing tables and Dillian White smirking and laughing. It was just a fun time and then all of that stuff pre-fight translated to the actual fight and made for a fun fight and this is kind of the same energy with tony bellew from creed and david hay right and that's kind of what's popping you look at fights very meaningful fights even uh terence crawford versus victor postal and andre ward versus sergey kovalev those were both meaningful fights in 2016 yet they did not produce good numbers right and it could have been because hbo decided with their budget cuts to milk the consumer and put on a ton of hbo pay-per-views that particular year i really think they had a, had a part to do with it but other than that the build-ups were very quiet like i don't even really remember anything from crawford postal press conference i went to that fight and i covered that fight because i knew the impact and how meaningful it was and i covered war kovalev too I went to that fight and covered it live too, but I don't really remember anything specific in either of those fights like built up, like the Derek Chisora throwing a table. And it's not about trash talking because I understand that's not everybody's lane, but um, if it's a pay-per-view, things like that help sell. So you have to find your niche and your, your lane to make the fight sell, right? Whatever that may be. Maybe you have to build a really compelling intense training montage or something like on some rocky movie stuff i don't know i'm not i'm not getting paid to think of ideas for them to promote the fights i do the best to promote the fights on my channel but bottom line is the fights that build interest are going to typically be the fights that probably have the highest viewership and i don't know what the with the time difference i don't know if it'll come on but i think the hey bell you 
will come on earlier and it'll probably do good ratings just because of the buildup. And again, it's not the most anticipated heavyweight fight. As far as the fight, I mean, I give credit to Tony Bellew for moving up to heavyweight. I didn't think this fight would even happen because I heard they had bad blood and stuff. But one was a cruiserweight who kind of recently moved up, coming from light heavyweight, been stopped by Adonis Stevenson at light heavyweight. And hey, even though he's a former cruiserweight, in recent memory, he moved up and he packed on a lot of muscle over the years. Right. So I don't even think he's too big to even go back down to cruiserweight. You can look at the like a side by side picture of David Hay and look, he's, he's too with his age. He would he would literally have to kill himself to come down under 200 pounds. It's just it's not even feasible. But Bellew is so confident that he's moving up, which is, is surprising. I didn't think he would do that. He just kind of became a champion at cruiserweight. A bad knockout loss at heavyweight, you know what I'm saying? If that's the case, it's going to be hard to bounce back from because it's kind of like Kelbrook versus Golovkin or Canelo knocking out Amir Khan. We haven't seen either of those fighters back. They both took long layoffs for whatever reason, injuries and surgeries and all types of stuff. But we haven't seen how they look. Getting knocked out by a bigger man can have career lasting injury you know what i mean or career lasting damages and effects so bellu he's definitely the underdog and it's really just because of the weight but based on their past sparring he believes he seems to believe that he can knock out david hay and i'm going to tell you guys like this you've seen the clip at the beginning hay says he feels good he's in shape he's in the wonderful miami weather this will be an embarrassing loss for david hay if he loses or gets hurt and knocked down because he's expected to go out there and knock out Tony Bellew. We're talking about, I mean, I get it. I think Tony Bellew is listed. I was, I was preparing the, the first look that I'm working on for this fight for Hey Bellew. And I think Bellew's listed at like six, three. So he has the frame, but he still hasn't moved up and acclimated. And he's been stopped. Like I said, by Adonis Stevenson in two divisions lighter at light heavyweight so again it'll be embarrassing if hey avoided the the cannon briggs fight and lets the smaller man move up and really have any type of success that's the danger with these dare to be great fights if if somebody pulls the rabbit out the hat and actually accomplishes it and dares to be great and beats the other person like canelo Khan, triple g brooke even even the Triple G Brook, a lot of people felt Triple G was exposed. Like, man, you you getting hit like this by a welterweight? Imagine if Canelo hit you with those uppercuts. So it's a lot of pressure on David Hay just because it's a smaller man moving up. And he's saying, I'm going to knock him out, knock him unconscious, yada, yada, yada. So I'm definitely tuned in. Again, it's the same night as Garcia Thurman. March 4th is cracking my birthday month. Shout out to all the Aries and the Pisces. And it looks like we're going to have a good day for, for fighting. I got the box of ego first look coming. But here's a progress picture of David Hay. I mean, the dude looks massive. Pause. It's just going to be, to me, it's an uphill battle. Like, I, I really, just based on the size differential, David Hay is powerful. And he's athletic. And he's going to have a weight advantage over Tony Bellew. So, it's kind of hard for me to see it. But... I like Tony Bellew's confidence. I really do because he, he seems like he's going into this fight and he's acting like David Hay ain't shit. You know what I mean? So there's a couple other variables. I might even do a seven reasons on this particular fight, but there's a couple of variables. David Hay did have a long hiatus. They have the, the past sparring that Bellew seems to believe that he did very well against Hay and had him buzzed in that fight. But I mean, things change over the year. But I was watching some the press conference and Bell U is like, I like when fighters are at least realistic. Like he he says that that Hay is basically all the trash talk. He kind of set it aside and said, hey, he's basically a good fighter and either of us can hurt the other person. And I like that when if he's the cruiserweight moving up and wait, if he were to be like, oh, hey, hey, he can't hurt me. He can't hurt me. You know what I'm saying? When you got hurt by Adonis Stevenson. It would sound kind of fake and forced, but I liked I liked the the modesty and the honesty with Tony Bellew, and I like like I said, I, I, it's nothing against the fighter. It's just what I see. I just see that weight 
advantage and that power and athleticism. David Hayes is a good fighter. You know what I mean? Especially he's fighting a guy coming up. It's, it's an uphill battle for Tony Bellew, but I mean, he's he sounds confident. You guys let me know what you've seen from past Bellew fights. Do you, Is anyone picking Bellew to beat David Hay? Like, I want to know that in the comments section. But other than that, it's, it should be a good fight. I'm looking forward to it. And I think David Hay, like I said, if he if he comes out there and then ends up losing to Tony Bellew, that's going to be a huge blow to his career. Plus, he's, he's inching closer to a, a Joshua Klitschko winner fight and a title shot. And he said he wants to be a champion again. So that will obviously thwart those plans. Let me know what you guys think. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you share the video, like the video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.